It's really not that important what meat-eating societies think about veganism because it's pretty damn easy for meat-eaters to brush this stuff aside, laugh it off, and make jokes about it. It's always easy for victimizers to mock and minimize the suffering of the victim, something we've done awfully well, unfortunately, when it came to forms of human-to-human -human oppression. And I understand some people think it's radical or silly when I say view an issue through the eyes of a cow, a pig, a chicken, a turkey, a fish, or some other animal on this planet. But understand that all social justice movements always look at the issue through the eyes of the victims. I mean, abolitionists looked at slavery through the eyes of enslaved blacks, while the Allied forces looked at Nazism through the eyes of Jews and other non-Aryans that Hitler labeled unworthy and expendable. If you utilize empathy, man, it truly allows you to understand the injustice without overanalyzing the issue. Please do not overanalyze and overthink what I'm talking about tonight. There's just no need to. This is simple stuff. This is compassion, decency, and mercy, and kindness. I'll break it down even further for everybody. When I say use empathy, all I'm saying is use the golden rule. Actually put it to use for a change. Instead of just paying lip service to it like most people do. And the golden rule, by the way, is in all religions in one way or another. Even atheists say it's a wise way to live your life. Because the golden rule simply states that you should treat others. And animals do qualify as others no matter how you look at this issue. You should treat others like you would want to be treated. You should do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. And since no one in this classroom, I'm positive, wants to be treated the way we treat cows and pigs and chickens and turkeys and fish and most other animals, again, there's no reason to allow speciesism to continue unabated. Now, I have to drive this point home a little further about discrimination because so many people have a hard time comprehending the fact that humans are acting in a vile, discriminatory way towards the animals that they share this planet with. But as the speech goes on, I sure hope you start to figure out that the same exact asinine and idiotic and vicious and vile excuses and rationalizations that people always use to oppress, enslave, and kill the animals, they are the exact same asinine and moronic excuses that we have used to oppress, enslave, and kill each other. Whether it was whites over blacks, Latinos and Asians, men over women, straight people over gay people, all the religious hatred, the religious wars that have been going on for thousands of years. You know, a sad comment that I hear a lot when I travel this country, and I do a lot of lecturing nowadays, around 250 talks a year in 20 states to around 10,000 students. I hear a lot of people make a comment like this to me. Hey, Gary. Well, man, your speech is pretty tight, man. You surprise me. You make a lot of sense, and you do make some pretty great points, except you're talking about animals. They're just fish. They don't look like us. They don't act like us. They don't think like us. So they don't deserve any moral consideration whatsoever. They don't deserve their right to be free and their right to bodily integrity. Well, the problem with that line of thinking, when you go back a couple of hundred years ago in slavery America, and activists like William Lloyd Garrison and Frederick Douglass were trying to abolish slavery? What do you think the majority of white people were saying about blacks? Oh, come on, they're just blacks. They don't look like us. They don't act like us. So they don't deserve any moral consideration whatsoever. They don't deserve their right to be free and their right to bodily integrity. Go back 87 years ago, before the 19th Amendment was enacted, giving women the right to vote. When women were trying to obtain their equal say in society, what do you think the men were constantly saying? Oh, come on, they're just women. They don't look like us. They don't act like us. Not as smart as we are. Not as strong as we are. I always love that form of logic from men. Not as strong as we are. So they don't deserve their equal say in society? The moment we start playing this asinine fill-in-the-blank game, Fill in the blank and goes like this. They're just blacks, they're just women, they're just homosexuals, oh, they're just immigrants, they're just Mexicans, they're just Iraqis, they're just animals, they're just cows, and they're just fish. It is an asinine, stupid, and invalid excuse to harm somebody else. To commit acts of cruelty and injustice against someone else. Peaceful, compassionate ways of being unjust do not exist.
And that's because violence is violence. Cruelty is cruelty. Discrimination is discrimination. And premeditated murder is premeditated murder, even if the victims only walk on all fours and have fur and feathers and horns and beaks or gills. I hope you didn't really believe that happy cows come from California. And animals sing and dance on the way to the slaughterhouse and wind up at the grocery store all magically wrapped in plastic. It is amazing the things that we do to animals on a daily basis. And we have the audacity to think that we are civilized. She's that purports to know right from wrong. And the animals have not done one single thing to us to deserve the wrath and the cruelty that we hurl on them. Not a single justification, not one, for what we do to these innocent beings. I want to let everyone know that around 11 years ago, when I was still consuming the cut-up corpses of dismembered animals, and I am not being dramatic when I say that I'm just fed up with the lies I am, I've had enough of the euphemisms. So I hope right now people understand, maybe for the first time ever, what meat actually is. It is the cut up corpse of a dismembered and tortured animal. It's a dead body sliced up into really small pieces. I used to come up with insane excuses like everyone else to eat flesh. I hope you don't think I was any different. No different. God says it's okay. Well, that's why I put the animals here. Oh, but it tastes so good. Oh, but I need my protein. Oh, but if we don't kill the animals, they're going to overpopulate and take over the world. You don't think I know the same idiotic excuses and rationalizations that everybody else uses? Man, I used them for years myself. I used to come up with the most invalid reasons to justify torture and cruelty against innocent beings. Not to allow animals into my circle of compassion until I finally understood something. And it was the cold hard truth that I was complicit in all the violence. Animals were being tortured and killed so I could have a sandwich later on that day. Frankly, I am ashamed and embarrassed to admit that I ever once believed that I was more special than the animals to think that they should have had to suffer and die intentionally on my behalf. Because I am no longer that arrogant and pretentious to think that my feelings or the feelings of my species are the only things that count on this planet and in this universe. Please understand, as meat eaters, we are all complicit in the violence. Oh, we don't do the killing directly. And you think maybe there's a reason for that? Maybe because 99% of all human beings cannot take a 12-inch blade and shove it into somebody else's throat and start slicing and cut their head off? But we sure pay other people to do the dirty work for us. Capitalism. We live in a capitalist society. Supply and demand. Corporations like Tyson and ConAgra, Smithfield and Purdue, companies like McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's and KFC, they would not be producing a flesh product if there were no market for that flesh product. So don't for one minute think that you, yourself, cannot directly affect the lives of thousands of animals by just changing what you eat every day. From birth until death in America, every single meat eater consumes around 3,000 land animals. And thousands of other marine animals, those are stats from the USDA. And collectively we are enslaving and killing 10 billion land animals in America every year and 18 billion marine animals in America every single year. And I hope people understand what I'm truly offering you tonight. It's quite special. You don't get this offered to you ever throughout your entire lifetimes. Do you realize when you hit the door after my speech that you can directly end a massacre? You can take part in directly ending a massacre. Has that ever been offered to you? Instead of just paying lip service to all the problems that are going on on this planet that you are not even responsible for and that you are not even actively trying to end. 
I got to tell you something that drives me insane when I travel the country talking to so many thousands of people every year. Boy, everybody talks a good game. Everybody is such a smooth talker when it comes to peace and compassion. Everybody always wants to tell me, never show me, just want to tell me how peaceful and compassionate they are because of what they believe or what they're opposed to. Hey Gary, I believe in that and I'm opposed to that and the genocide in Darfur, oh man, I'm opposed to that and the war in the Middle East marked me down, I'm opposed to that too. What other atrocity you got for me, man? Oh, that's horrible. Can you mark me down for being opposed to that too? Can somebody tell me since when does opposing an atrocity make the world a better place? I'd like to know. I'd like to know since when does opposing an atrocity alleviate or eliminate the atrocity? Listen, folks, I do understand most of you don't want to hear what I have to say tonight. I'm cognizant about that. But I hope you're aware that, as I stated earlier, I am no politician. I'm no bullshit artist. I'm not here trying to say something so I can scam your vote for next term. I'm not a PR person. I'm not a salesperson. I don't want to sell you a thing. I don't want your money. I don't want your email addresses, and I don't want your mailing addresses. I'm here to talk about the worst form of cruelty and violence taking place on this planet, bar none. Even though most people don't want to hear about it. But when you sit back in the comfort of your living room, condemning things that are going on elsewhere, my friends, that is pure, unadulterated lip service. That's the definition of lip service. And by the way, when everybody always tells me how opposed they are to the genocide in Darfur, besides the people doing the actual killing, who's for it? What kind of an opposition is this? It's everybody opposing i got news for you, unless you get on a plane and fly to the Sudan to help stop the genocide there, your opposition right here doesn't mean a damn thing. Not a damn thing. But this is a chance to walk the compassionate talk that everybody's always talking about. This is a chance to show others how truly peaceful you are. This is a chance for a personal revolution, to leave your mark on this planet, a very light mark, while you're here by causing the least amount of harm. Veganism. And this is so blasphemous to me in so many ways. This God complex that we have. Deciding who gets to live and who gets to die. Who gets to procreate when and where. I don't even know where to begin with this condemnation. I don't. But I'm going to start by saying this. We are not gods. And we are not angels. Do I have to remind everybody about the things we've done to each other? Cambodia, Armenia, Serbia, the Inquisition, the Crusades, Holocaust, slavery, apartheid, Rwanda, Uganda, killing the Native Americans, burning of witches, Virginia Tech. Do I need to continue this list? Why people walk around acting like humans are the crown of creation? Why? Because we say please and thank you to each other? Because we open up the door for somebody else once in a while? Or maybe because we send out cards praying for peace on earth once a year. Just praying for it, because God forbid we should ever do anything to actually make it happen. But hey, every December, peace on earth to you. Hey, peace on earth, everybody. Hey, peace on earth to you. We have taken away so much from the animals because of our selfish, barbaric habits, rituals, and traditions, and convenience, and of course, the root of all evil, profit, money, We've taken away their right to be free. I do not exclude myself from the condemnations that you are hearing. Listen to the words I, I use. I choose every word I use for a reason. I say we, humans, humankind. I'm part of all those groups. As long as my species does something atrocious to another, I take complete and full responsibility. I am not excluding myself from these harsh words. And you hear me saying these things because I am tired of people walking around with rose-colored glasses on thinking that everything's wonderful. It's not. Do you realize there is only one species on this planet and one species alone that if you remove that species from the planet, 
The removal benefits every other species. All the animal species, the forest, the rainforest, the woods, the air, and the water. Everything on planet Earth, fact, not my opinion, fact, benefits if you take out one species. It's us. If we're the only ones not living in harmony with the ecosystem, the only ones destroying its own home and taking everyone else down with us, the perpetual question I have is why do people think we're so special? We're the complete opposite. We have strayed so badly from things that are normal and natural and proper, and it's time to get back on this path. Call me naive, idealistic, foolishly idealistic, but I do have faith in humans. Sometimes I don't know why, but I do, because I know deep down inside most people are good people. But that compassion, that goodness has been beaten down in us. It's dormant. And I'm just trying to awaken everybody from this soporific, mindless, robotic state. Do this, do that, eat here, eat there, pray here, pray here, and nobody thinks for themselves anymore. Everybody does what they're told, like good little automatons. There are two groups of people on this planet. The haves and the have-nots. The wealthy and the destitute. And I'm talking destitute. Not American destitute. Even our destitute people in America have cable TV and cell phones and running water. I'm talking third world destitute. When you look around this planet, what's killing destitute, impoverished people? Two things. Besides war, two things. Lack of clean water, dirty water. Lack of food, starvation. Starvation and dirty water. When did you ever hear of 10,000 Ethiopians dying from cancer? 100,000 Nigerians dying from heart attacks and strokes? Doesn't happen. Conversely, look to the affluent world. Look to the Western world. What's everybody dying of? Heart attacks, strokes, cancers, and diabetes. Diseases of wealth. Diseases of affluence. What we choose to put into our bodies every single day that is killing us. I certainly know why people eat meat. We've acquired a taste for it, an addiction. It is the king of all addictions, by the way. Just so you know, cocaine, heroin, alcohol, cigarettes, ain't got shit on meat, cheese, milk, and eggs. It is the king of all addictions. Look at the billions of beings that we murder, the ill health we bring into our bodies. The planet we're destroying, it is the king of all addictions. Now, I know we don't need meat to be ethical. That's obvious. We don't need meat to stay healthy, that's also obvious, and we certainly don't need meat to alleviate world hunger. How come small groups of people always have to convince the masses why it's wrong to enslave, discriminate, or kill innocent beings? What's shocking is that the masses are always shocked when they're accused of acting inappropriately. It took 400 years to convince white people in America not to own black people. And another 100 years on top of that to end segregation. And if somebody wants to hang out after class and explain to me why those abolitions didn't take seconds, I'd love to hear about it.